Welcome to a large model showman's engine part 46, a steam test to see if everything works. The first thing to do is to light the fire. I've filled the firebox, well more or less, with kindling wood. And the last three pieces of kindling wood I'm soaking in white spirit. Then when I put these three pieces of wood on the shovel and light them using my gas lighter, all I have to do is quickly add the sticks into the firebox with the rest of the wood. Things like the fire hole door on this engine are very inaccessible. There's a long piece of wire that I have to lift up just to open the fire hole door. So now I'm wrestling with it a bit, trying to get the wood in there before it sets fire to my hand. At this point, I got the shovel stuck. There's a better way of doing this. I think I'm going to make a chute where I can just put coal and stuff like that down the chute straight into the fire hole. This time I'm using a small electric blower. I showed how I made this in a previous episode, but it's making a bit of a funny noise. To be honest, it does this. I think there's something loose inside it. I'll have to look into that. But for now, running on 6 volts, it seems to be fine. I don't want to force the boiler. That would not be a wise thing to do. All the blower or exhauster fan does is provides a gentle draft through the fire and makes it so that the cab area of the engine doesn't fill with smoke and asphyxiate me. This showman's engine has a great feature, two liftable or removable panels in the roof, and because there are two of these hatches that lift up, I can easily fully lubricate both the crankshaft part of the mechanism and the front part where the crosshead is. Without this, someone of my physical size really would struggle getting to the oiling points underneath the canopy. This is my lovely assistant, Graham, who showed up just at the right time. That's blowing a bit better. Graham and I have been friends for many, many years and we went to school together. After a while I could disconnect the electric blower with its annoying noise and even though the amount of pressure in the boiler is currently negligible, there's enough to operate the blower. The steam blower operated from the front of the engine blows a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. I'm checking that the siren and whistle valves work and they do. The whistle works fine on low pressure, but the siren doesn't work at all. I'll wait until the pressure builds before I test that. There is, however, just enough pressure to run the engine, and as you can see, it's generating some electricity, although some of the bulbs are out. I still need to give some attention to the wiring on the engine. Where all of the wires terminate, it's a bit of a mess, and it needs fitting in some sort of a container. The lights are wired in a series parallel arrangement with four 12 volt lights in each bank. The four at the back are not lighting, I wonder what's going on here. But then my friend Graham, who actually is a retired electrician, said maybe it's a good idea to put some more bulbs in it. And then I remembered I was two bulbs short and I need to get some more 12 volt bulbs. Temporarily, later on, I took some out of the middle row. So with the engine running, what are the problems? Well, problem number one is the regulator doesn't fully shut off the steam. The live steam injector at the left hand side doesn't work at all. And as for the brand new siren that I bought recently, well, that doesn't do anything at all. The pressure's still fairly low. I think we're on about 40 PSI in this case. I found something out today. I've always used anthracite on all my steam locomotive models without any problems. But this traction engine does not like the anthracite that I have. It took a long, long time for it to raise any sort of steam worth mentioning. It's getting there now, but this was over one and a half hours into the steam test from lighting up. When I started to use the bag of coal that was given to me by Bob Brocklehurst, my friend who owns and runs Pugney's Light Railway in Wakefield, the engine started to perform. Really though, I do think I need to sweep the tubes. I would think that they're coated in soot very much so by now. Once I got rid of the anthracite, well I actually put it into the firebox. Underneath the anthracite layer in the bunker was some ordinary house coal. And this smells really bad or good, depending on which way you look at it. I now have a very good working pressure and the whistle works. But all I got from the siren once again was steam and no sound. My friend Graham was less than happy when I pulled the chain to blow the siren and covered him in scalding hot steam. The siren is still not working. 
When I finish this morning's edit, I will give the company from whom I bought the siren a ring and ask them why it's not working. There's plenty of steam going through it, but the small rotor inside is not actually rotating. Later today, I intend to remove the siren and see what's going on, or not going on. My friend Graham has just put the traction engine in gear and it's time to see if it goes. Going forwards was very easy. Going in reverse, sat on this trailer which is moving from left to right is a little bit more difficult. But I'm sure I'll get used to it. The situation isn't being helped because there's hardly any pressure in the tyres of the trailer. Here my friend Graham is trying to stabilise the driving truck and attempt to make it move backwards in a straight line. Which was quite tricky. I think it's better just to run the engine. I won't talk over this bit. Now we have plenty of pressure, it's time to open it up a bit. You will notice in this clip I've fitted some more bolts. The working pressure of this engine is 110 pounds per square inch. Here it's sitting at about 105 pounds per square inch and one of the safety valves is blowing off. But alas, the siren is still not working and neither is the live steam injector. After about four hours in steam, it was time to drop the fire. And here is the ash pan and grate on the floor. And that's it for this second steam test. It's been quite a fun day. I enjoyed that. I'd just like to say, as always, stay safe and well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.